Hi, and welcome to another video how to do generative AI in Snap. In this video, I would like to show you how to make a text generator, and we'll even tweak it a little bit to turn it into a music improvising bot. And we'll do it once again in Snap. And again in Snap, um, since this is AI, uh, we really don't need a sprite. Nothing is going to move. We can delete the sprite and do everything on the stage. And the first thing we'd like to do when we do a text generator, something like ChatGPT, is we'd like to have some material, some corpus of example texts that we give the AI so it can learn how we compose text so that it can then compose its own texts. And to do this, I searched the web for a bunch of fairy tales from the Brothers Grimm, and I downloaded about 30 of them, put them all into one text. Here they are. And I'm going to import them into Snap by just dragging them into Snap. It's just one long text with 30 fairy tales of the Brothers Grimm. And I want to split them into fragments. And um, so one way to split them is we can split them into words. So I can split the 30 fairy tales by word. And then I'm getting a fairly long list of words. But what I really like to do is I want to split them into pairs of words, then triples of words, quadruples of words, and so on. And this is something I cannot do with a split block. So I'm going to build these tuples um, out of a word list. So the first thing is I'm going to make a variable words, and I'm going to assign a this whole sequence of words of the 30 fairy tales. So now I have a bunch of words and it's a list. And if I would like to access elements of the list in Snap, I can use the item of a list block. So the item one of the words is one word, you know, item seven is another word. Now in Snap, I can also um, use a list and for example, get the item one and the item four. Then I'm getting another list with the first word and the fourth word of that list. So I can also, instead of using the list block, get a range of words. For example, I could get the numbers one to 10 of the world of the words. Now I'm getting you know, a slice of that list. And so, I could also take the numbers not from 1 to 10, but the numbers from 1 to the length of the word list. So now I'm getting a lot of numbers. And I could um, map over this list. Map is a high order function. It takes a list as an input. And then for every element of that list performs a function. So I could get the item. Um, now arrange the item, for example, one, um, and I leave that blank. So now it's the item, whatever it is, two, let's say, to um, the next one. So if I click on this, now I'm getting the first and the second, the second and the third, and so on. I can go down all the way until here it sort of starts again. So I don't want to get the last one. Um, I only want to get everything once. So instead of length of words, I can correct that by saying length of words minus one. Now I'm getting all the tuples of the words. So I want to get this for the pairs. I want to get it for the triples but also for larger fragments. So I want to turn this into a function. Now a function is a new block in Snap, so I'm going to make a block. It's going to be um, a reporter, a function that returns something. And 
These fragments of tuples are called n-grams. So I'm saying you know, n-grams of a sequence. And I'm getting this block, and n is going to be an input. It's going to be the numbers 1, 2, whichever. So n is going to be an input, and I can even specify that it should be a number. And sequence is a list. So now I have the uh, block. It's already there. I can make a little test case. I want to get the n grams of, um, you know, let's, let's say I want to get the three words, um, like triples. And what I can do is um, I can now take this and drag it in here to, to generalize this example into a function. So instead of the words, I want to access whatever sequence I'm passing into. And now this implicitly has pairs. I want to get this to work with any chain length. So um, I want to get the uh, length of sequence not minus 1, but minus 1 less the number, um, the, the chain length I want to give it to. And I want to do the same thing here for the range of indices I would like to um, access. So this is my function now. Let's actually try it. So here are the three grams or trigrams as they're called. So now I'm getting these chains of chains of three words. Um, if I'm putting one in here, I'm getting a list of you know just the single words. I can use four, then I'm getting tetragrams, and I can go up to five words. And these n-grams, these fragments, these chunks, are already something very interesting. When we chop up texts into little subchain of texts, for example, into you know four words, we can also kind of already do some interesting analysis. For example, we could check this table for um, recurring sublists. So we could find out, for example, what's the distribution inside here. There is a distribution uh, selector in the uh, list properties block. So we can get the uh, frequency analysis. So we can see the there's there's one variant that is most often with four words, and it's he came to the. Um, we can also visualize this. Um, for this, we can use the um, reshape block. The reshape block takes the lists, and we can tweak its dimensions. So, so we can put this list in here. It has four grams. Um, so I want to display. Actually, I don't know how how many. Um, rows it's going to be, but I wanted to have five columns because the fifth column is going to be the frequency. So now what I get is sort of report uh, about these word combinations and how often they occur in the text. And this is something interesting with these n-grams and with the frequency distribution. Um, these are used very often to analyze, for example, which language is this from? Also, this is sort of like a fingerprint of a text. So um, when, when, when this frequency distribution is very similar to the frequency distribution of another text, that's an indicator for plagiarism. So it helps us detect um, dishonest uh, academic behavior also. For the purpose of generating a text, of writing a GTP, um, we don't need um, the distribution. We just need um, these n-grams. So now I can chop up a text into chains, and I want it to have, you know, all the chains. You know, the single words, the doubles, the triples, the quadruples. So let's say one to five. So what I can do is I can map over the one to five and get 
leave the grams, the N, empty. Now I'm getting, let's look at this. Now I'm getting a somewhat funny table. Um, but this is only because the format by default is a little bit strange. By right-clicking on here, I can, I can uh, view it as a list view. And if we look at this list view, this is interesting. So here is one words, two words, three words. This is actually four words. And then down there, there's five words. So we're getting sort of a cascade of different analysis of the same text. And this is precisely what we call a data model. It's a language model. I'm going to delete the variable words and instead make a variable that I'm going to call fragments. I'm going to assign the fragments the outcome of um, mapping our ingram function over the numbers 1 to 5. Uh, so now we can look at these fragments and we can, for example, check them. Like the item 1 of the fragments is one column. The item 2 of the fragments is two columns or pairs of words and so on. Like the item 4 is four columns. And having these, like, um, these different models of, of chains neatly stacked up so we can see whichever index we we access of that model of those fragments is exactly the number of columns that we get, we can uh, sort of do interesting things. For example, we could take a list and we could say, um, let's write something in here. Let's, for example, um, say she looked at. So here we have a list of the words she looked at and we could search in, for example, the list of um, four grams, whether there are any entries in here where the first three columns match this list. Let's actually try this. So we want to filter them. Filter is, is um, keep items in SNAP. So we want to filter the, uh, or the four grams for any entry that um, equals this, but it's not going to equal this because it has four columns. So we need to find the first three words. Remember, this is the item block. So we can take the item block, but we want to get the item numbers one to three. So where the first three columns match what match this, this list. So if I'm clicking this, I'm saying, ah, she looked at Snow White. That's one possibility. She looked at all or she looked at him. So all these words somehow occurred in the context of she looked at. And we could now pick any of these to complete the sentence, to complete this fragment. We could try this with others. Like, like let's, for example, uh, say the king's son and filter our model. The king's son said, waited, had, followed, picked, said. Ah, you can see this is interesting. So we have twice. We have said here. We have said here. Um, so in this, in these um, engrams. We sometimes have multiple occurrences of the same combination. And that's great because now if we pick any um, random element of this, uh, the probability is exactly the same as it was in the 30 um, fairy tales that we took to chop them up into these fragments. So one way to pick a next word would be to now just get a random item of this and then get the last word of this. 
And now if I click on this, the king's son did, the king's son said, the king's son followed. And we can check this out with others. Like we could say the old woman and find out the old woman had, the old woman spoke. So we get different ways to guess the next word. Guessing the next element in a sequence is precisely what we want to write now um, as a block. So I'm going to make a new block. It's going to be another reporter and it says guess the next item in a sequence based on a model. And so this is going to have two inputs, the sequence, which is a list, and the model, which is our list of chunks or list of fragments. Um, so now what we want to do is there, what we pass into here, this list, the old woman, is a list of three items. Sometimes there might be more items. Sometimes there might be fewer items. So we want to look through all the elements in our fragments. And in order to do this, we can use a four block. And the four is going to go through all the ends of the n-grams. But we want to count down. Like we want to take the one with the longest chain. And then if we don't find something, we want to go to, uh, uh, to the shorter chains, to the shorter fragments. So um, we're going to take the length of the model minus one because it's the last word we're interested in. So we're going to take the length of the model minus one. And we're going to count down to one. And now we need to find this, the old woman. We need to find the context, kind of the last words that we wrote or the last words that we found. So I'm going to make a script variable. It's going to be called context. And the context is going to be the last n words of the sequence. So this is the item block. And we're going to select something from the sequence. We're going to select the numbers all to the length of the sequence. That's the end of the sequence. And then we want to take the last n words, which is going to be the length of the sequence minus n minus 1. Now we want to filter um, the model for matching candidates. So we're going to make another um, variable, candidates. And we're going to filter the candidates. We're going to set the candidates to, so we're keeping now, we want to look through all these um, records that are one column larger than the context that we have. So we want to filter in the item. Um, this is the um, model and the item n plus 1. And we're going to check all these that match with the context. But it's the first columns. So again, we take the item block. And we say we take the numbers from 1 to n. Those should match. Now we want to find out whether we have a match in that n. So we can use an if block for that. We want to find out whether we have candidates. We have candidates if the list that we get out there is not empty. So if not is empty, our candidates, if we do have candidates, we want to return, we want to report the last word of a random candidate. So we report the last
last item of a random candidate. Now, if we entered something that cannot be found anywhere, we're really desperate. We need to guess the next word. If we can't find any context, we just gonna report a random word and take it from there. So then we can just say, we're gonna report the last item of a random, not of a random candidate, but of a random thing of the first item of the model. And this is our guess the next item in sequence function. Let's try this out. Um, so here it is. I'm guessing the next item in, well, let's say not the old woman, but um, say he went to, and we want to look in the fragments. So let's check this out. He went to the, he went to sleep. Yeah, this looks like it works. Now we can remove all of this and we have these two functions. One function that splits up our corpus, our examples into n grams that turns it into a uh, language model, a statistical language model, and the other function that guesses a plausible next item in a sequence. And we should be able now to turn this into an interesting text generator. So let's say I first would like to ask the user um, to enter the beginning of a new fairy tale. And then I want to make a story. Um, and the story is going to be a list. So we're going to set the story to um, the answer, but we're going to split the answer by words. So splitting the answer by word. Now we have a list. And then what we want to do is we want to add the next word to that story. So I'm going to add the guess the next item in the story based on the fragments on the model. We want to add that to the story. And then we want to output the story. So we want to actually say, we don't want to say the story, we want to put the story again together as a list, as a text. And there is a selector for that in the list block. We want to get the text of the story. And uh, let's actually try this. So we can put the green flag on here. Then we could say broadcast broadcast the next. We could say, well, when I receive next, do this. And we could say, you know, whenever, for example, the user presses the space key, it should add one word. So we're also going to broadcast like this. Let's try this. So um, we could say, for example, um, she looked at and so now I'm saying she looked at all. Now I'm going to press the space key a couple of times. She looked at all the leaves on the trees and did not know what to say for astonishment. Then one of them took the other aside and said, listen, the little fellow would make our fortune if we exhibited him in a large town for money. We would buy him. They went to the mountains and looked for copper and gold. In the evenings they came back and uh, so it's now inventing a fairy tale. It's stitching together parts of fairy tales that um, are uh, encoded in the fragments, but here already it changed the um, fairy tales because now we're at Hansel and Gretel. Uh, so it's, it's sort of making uh, changes and inventing its own sentences, but they sound plausible and they very much sound like the fairy tales of the Brothers Grimm. 
Now, of course, this is only a plausible sentence. This sentence generator that we did doesn't come up with any really coherent stories. Sometimes not even the sentences make sense. And there are reasons for that. Part of it is I've only fed it about 30 um, little texts, 30 little fairy tales. If I gave it way more fairy tales, there'd be way more variety to choose from. But the other issue, why it's not making any really good stories, is it only has very little context. So here it only has like the last up to five words. Now, that means that it's only looking at the very last words of the story to try to make sense how to take it from there, how to guess the next item. If you tell a story, you want to remember certain things like the names of your characters. You want to remember what already happened so you can go on and um, tell a story around that and, and go back to it at a later paragraph. And so this is what this little model is missing. So if we look at something like ChatGPT, this pretty much works exactly like what we did right now, which is also known as a Markov chain text generator. Now, GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. So this is generative. It is sort of pre-trained because it doesn't learn, but it's lacking the transformer part. A transformer, as ChatGPT uses, is a very complex algorithm that uses massive data and massive parallel computing to have a longer memory of things that are important that play a role. But the principle of how it comes up with this is exactly as what we've written here. And the cool thing is, see, this function, the guess the next item function, is really a very general purpose function. We can guess the next item in any sequence. And this is precisely what this um, type of AI is used for. We can use it to, to write stories. We can also use it to give you hints how to complete a sentence. We can even use it how to find a word in between other words. But it's also used for DNA sequencing. It's uh, used for suggesting you playlists or shopping lists. And since it is so general purpose, I thought, well, you know, I'm a musician. I love music. Melodies are a sequence. So I transcribed a bunch of songs into Snap. Now a song is a bunch of notes. So a note is a pitch for a duration. So I can play this song. Here's, here's 20 songs. If I want to play these songs, I can enumerate this list and I can play every note. And I can, like the first item of that note is the pitch. And the second item of that note is the duration. So now I should be getting increase the tempo a little bit. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. And I've got about 20 of these songs. My body went over the ocean. So I want to take these songs and chop up the melodies. And see, I can use the exact same blocks for this. Let me show you. So I'm going to make a script variable here. Um, and it's going to be a music fragments variable. I'm going to use the um, same thing. I'm going to set the music fragments to, I'm going to, going to map this block, the n-grams block, but this not over the stories, but over the 20 songs, because the 20 songs already are a list. So I can take the n-grams of the 20 songs. 
I'm gonna map them over. Now, since there are only 20, if I if I take it from one to five, I might be getting too much context, so it might stay in, in the same song for too long. So I'm just gonna take the numbers one to three. So now I've got all the fragments, and now what I wanna do is, um, you know, let's make a melody actually, not a story, but a melody. A melody, and let's start, let's say the melody is just an empty list. So we're gonna start with, um, a random node. It's an empty list. Now I want this program to improvise music. So I'm going to take a forever loop and just always add a guess the next item. And the next item is the next node. Guess the next item in the melody based on the music fragments to the melody and play that last note. So play the note. What I'm playing is the first item of um, the last note. That's the last item in the melody. I want to play that for the second item of that last note. So this is the exact same script, is the exact same functions that we made for generating text, and with some luck is going to generate some interesting melodies. Let's click on this and find out. Uh, something wrong. Uh, in grams music oh it's the fragments I want to set the music fragments to this okay And so on. So you can see it's it's improvising along these 20 children's songs um, that I input here and combining them in random ways that are somehow associative because it's sort of noticing, oh, this is something that might belong to some song, so let's take it from there. What I wanted to show you here is AI and generative AI is not nearly such a mystery as people might claim, or as you might think, is actually something that you can play with yourself. You can program these things yourself. It is very interesting because it is very general purpose. We can use the exact same ideas to complete sentences, to complete melodies, to complete DNA. And uh, it's fun, we can play with it ourselves, and we can think about what it does and how we can improve it and then we can also appreciate the current developments around generative AI. So I'd like to invite you to try your own generative AI features, maybe combine them with the chatbot from the last video um, and enjoy having fun with programming your own text generator.